Hello everyone, in the previous video we have seen how to bypass the root detection check which is present in this application at Java layer. Now in this video we will see how to hook into the native library in order to extract the secret code or the text which is required to solve this challenge using Frida. So currently if I pass any arbitrary string and hit verify, it says that's not it, try again. Okay, and in order to figure out the logic and what's going on behind this verify function, let's go back to our JEDX main activity. And if we scroll down, we can see that indeed there is a verify function defined here. And if this condition is true, then it will show us the success. Otherwise, it is show it will show us. No, nope, that's not it, try again. So currently we have seen that we are getting this dialog right so what we need to do is uh, we need to somehow identify what this function is doing what this method is doing and somehow make it true so that it will show us the success dialog now again if i double click to this a method it will take me to the definition of this function and here we can see that it took us to the pool check class where this a method is defined and then it's calling a bar function and if you noticed already this bar function is defined here as private native boolean bar. So this native keyword suggests that this bar function is defined inside this libfoo native library. So now it's time finally to disassemble this native library and see what's going on inside this. So for disassembly, you can use any disassembler which you like, like Ida or Ghidra or Radare. For this video, I am going to use Radare 2 as it has all the functionalities required to disassemble any binary and it's pretty fast and convenient also although it's command line tool but once you get your hands on then it's pretty easy to use let me launch a new terminal and navigate to the bind to the directory where we have our uh, native library presents so it's under my training folder crack me and here we have extracted our apk oh we have not yet extracted okay so it's under this crack me to folder and if I list over here, we have this APK, right? Now, in order to get that library, we need to first decompile this application. So for that, I'm going to use APK tool, decompile, uncrackable. So as you can see now, all the assets, classes, and uh, resources has been extracted. And here you can see we now have a new directory with the application name. So that's the extracted directory. And if we go inside it, we can see the application resources and assets. Now here is the lib directory where our native libraries are present and um, since nowadays ARM64 is the current architecture which is being used in most of the devices so that's the reason I am going to look into the ARM64 version of the library so here it is now if you are already familiar with Radare 2 you must have known that to load the binary into Radare we have this R2 command and then we can simply pass the binary name and hit enter that's it so now it's not yet analyzed the binary for us so to analyze we can uh, type triple a and hit enter so now the analysis is done since it's a small library the analysis was fast and now using afl we can list down all the functions which are present in this binary so these are all the functions which are there in this native library and as you can see the first function which is present at this offset has this code check underscore bar so this is what we are interested in right now. So let's quickly change our cursors to this offset using S command. And now using PDF, we can see the disassembly of this function. That's it. So here is the disassemble code of this function, code check underscore bar. And here we can see that a lot of stuff is going on. So we have some sort of string, then some sort of XOR operation after that we have some comparison and then str and cmp is being called all right so from these instructions that we can figure out what's going on so just by looking at this branch instruction which is branch to str and cmp um, we can say that this function is responsible uh, for performing the verification whether the secret entered by user is correct or not. So here Radare shows us the syntax of the uh, native functions as well. So it shows us that this strcmp takes three arguments, first string, second string, and then the size of this string, which is very convenient, right? Also, let's try to see the decompiled version of this disassembly to get a more better idea what's going on. So using pdg 
we can see the decompiled C code of this function and internally it uses Ghidra plugin so basically it's using the Ghidra decompiler to show us this C code and over here we can see that indeed there is a if condition and then if this condition is true then it's setting this uvar 3 to 1 otherwise 0 so we can see that this is a flag and based on this condition it will be set now the first thing which we can do is to directly hook this sts ncmp function since it's an imported function which is coming from a third party dependency or library that is libc.so so this would give us so by hooking this str and cmp uh, we can intercept the arguments in order to see what's going on in these s1 and s2 to figure out the actual string or actual secret right but there is an issue with this approach since this str and cmp is an imported function and in android uh, sometimes such functions are being used by the internal system libraries also so that would give us a lot of garbage output right so to avoid that instead of hooking this str and cmp function directly uh, what we are going to do is we are going to hook this instruction itself at this offset so in order to do so let's go back to our script and now we don't need to be inside this java.perform block because we are not dealing with the native code in Frida, we have intercepted.attach API, uh, which we can use to hook to any arbitrary address. But in order to do so, we first need to figure out the base address of the library where it is loaded by our Android loader at runtime, right? And since this base address gets changed every time whenever we launch the application because of ASLR uh, that is present in modern operating systems. So to figure out that base address, first of all, let's attach our interceptor to the Android loader. First of all, let's get the module of our loader using module dot find module by name. And this method takes two argument. First one is the library name. So if you don't know in which library uh, your function name is present you can simply pass null and freda will freda will automatically figure out in which library that function is and automatically return you the module so now usually in android the native libraries gets loaded using android underscore dl open underscore ext method let's store this into dl open function address variable or uh, dl open module variable okay and now using interceptor dot attach we can simply hook to this android dl open extension module to see what all libraries are being loaded at runtime and if it matches our lifu library then we will find out the base address so in this interceptor attach api we need to tell the address where we need to perform the hook so in this case we need to patch our hook to the address returned by this api which is the address where android dl open ext function resides right now let's store this address of android dl open into dl open function address variable okay and now using interceptor dot attach and passing this function address as the first argument we can tell freda to hook at this specific address which is the address where our android dl open is present and then we can simply pass the body so here we actually have two functions first one is the on enter and the second one is on leave so on enter will be triggered when as soon as this android dl open ext function starts right and on leave will be triggered when android dl open ext function is about to return okay now in this particular case since uh, the library will be loaded after this android dl open ext function completes and uh, the arguments which are being passed to this android dl open extension will be processed when this function starts executing right so that's why we need both these events here on enter and as well as on leave so first of all in on enter let's define the function with arguments similarly we can define our on leave function and here we have our return value as argument okay so over here we need to create a small logic to check whether our libfu library is being loaded or not so for that i am going to define a variable over here libfu loaded initializing it to zero by default 
which means it's not yet loaded correct and then inside this function so android underscore dl open ext method first argument will always contain the library path which is being loaded by the loader okay so if i check the first argument which is indexed by zero and it's obviously of character pointer type so we can use read c string method and if this contains libfoo.so then we can say that our libfoo is loaded so i'm setting it to one over here right now in the on leave method since we don't have these args arguments in this particular block that's why we need to define such kind of logic now over here we have access to our user defined variable lib full loaded and if it's equal to equal to one then we are sure that our library is loaded into the memory so let's put log lib foo loaded and now let's try to find out the base address of this library and for that we have a api called process dot find module by name and this take one argument which is the library name right so what this will do is it will return us the, it will actually iterate over all the modules and we'll try to figure out whether this library is present or not and if it is present it will return the complete module object but since we are only interested in the base address uh, what we can do is from that object using dot operator we can only access the base and this will give us the base address so let's put another log libfoo loaded at base address right now just for the readability purposes i am defining a function over here with the name intercept strn emp okay and i'm going to pass the base address as an argument to this function and then what was our original goal our original goal was to hook at this specific offset right so now we have the base address where this native library is loaded and uh, since it's a base address we have to know this base address right because the final address to this instruction would be the base address plus this offset now using interceptor dot attach and passing this base address dot head and adding that offset which is this we can tell Frida to hook at this specific instruction right and inside this again we have on enter arguments and the body but now we don't really need on leave function because we are just going to intercept the arguments which are being passed to this function and as per the arm64 architecture whenever any function is being called the arguments to that function will be stored into the registers starting from x0 okay so in the previous instructions just before this branch instruction you can observe that it's moving uh, some values into x0 and x1 register right so this x0 register will be the first argument of this function and this x1 register is the second argument to this function right so in order to access these arguments all we need to do is read the values pointed out by these registers so let's do that directly into the console log s1 argument and we can access the registers in frida using this dot context dot x0 register we have and uh, since we already know the argument type is character pointer we can directly use read c string method to read null terminated fki characters and similarly we have a string 2 which again we can access you through x1 register and then call read c string method over it and now let's call this intercept function over here and pass our base address to this okay hopefully this should work and uh, yeah let's go back to our Frida terminal quit our previous script and launch it again and let me open up the device screen and hit enter the process is started again but as you can see we got some error type error not a function at line number 31 which is this one
okay actually uh, here i have made a mistake it, this is not actually find module by name in but find export by name since this is an exported function so now if okay all looks good and over here we can see our libful library is loaded at this base address right and if we enter something let's say this is secret and hit verify still it says that's not a try again which is fine but our interceptor uh, is not triggered as you can see in the log we didn't get anything okay so why is it so let's try to troubleshoot this and in the decompiled view if you remember uh, there is this another check just before the string comparison check which is checking hex 17 so if this iwear2 is hex 17 then it will set this flag to true also let me show you the graph view of this function all right so let me go down over here you can see that uh, here is the vestia cmp but just before this block we have a condition which is a comparison between w0 and hex 17 so this hex 17 is equivalent to 23 in decimal so if w0 is equal to 23 then only this string comparison block will be executed otherwise it will come out to this block so most likely what's happening is since we are not sure uh, currently what our w0 is which is causing this check to fail and instead of going over here our program execution is going to this block and that's why our str and cmp instruction is not being executed okay usually what happens is whenever there is a string comparison check just before that it checks for the length of the string so if we take this as an assumption and assume that um, it's comparing the length of the string with hex 17 which is 23 and then only this block will be executed so let's follow this assumption and try to give it an input of 23 characters 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 there is our terminal okay in the log now you can see uh, indeed our native hook got triggered and we can see the value of s1 argument and s2 argument so this is our input which we have entered just now and this is the string with which it is being compared to so now we know the string thanks for all the fishes and if we enter this as a secret our challenge should be solved thanks for all the fish verify boom success this is the correct secret okay so congrats you have learned how to bypass root detection at java layer using frida and also how to hook into the native code at any arbitrary instruction thank you so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed and learned along with me then don't forget to hit a like and subscribe to this channel as i am going to upload more such content 